Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. Today's tutorial is the second part of my ongoing series on vector art. Um, in yesterday's tutorial we looked at the paths tool. I'm going to be looking at that in a little bit more detail today. Um, now firstly I should say that um, this item that we've got on the GIMP at the moment is just a very very simple quick drawing I did with um, a felt pen um, during a meeting at work. Um, that was just, you know, just a bit of a doodle. But I'm going to turn that doodle, obviously I've scanned this into my computer, and I'm going to turn that into something that's a little bit more like something you'd see um, as a, a graphic design thing from, uh, you know, a kind of web created or a computer created logo. So we've got this original kind of sketch, and then today we're going to look at basically turning it into something a bit more like that. Now this is by no means um, an accomplished piece of work, um, it's very rough, the edges are all over the place and I haven't really spent any time on it, but you can see the basics of how I've turned this into a piece of vector art. Um, we've used the paths tool to um, stroke the path, we've got a background that um, fades from a kind of orange to a, a red, and we've got this kind of transparent -y, fade -y, bubbly bit that's uh, quite fashionable in uh, vector art as well. So we're just going to use this very very simple and very poor attempt at a, uh, a logo to um, just get to know some of the basics of the paths tool in a bit more detail and in some of the other tools that we can use for vector art. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go all the way back to the beginning of my base image and clear my undo history because we're going to be starting from scratch and I'll just set that as well. <coughs> The first thing we're going to need then is going to be our paths tool. Now, I've got this zoomed in quite far. Um, I've got it to about 150%, just so I can see what I'm doing. Now, what you're going to need to do is be very, very careful with the paths tool, and don't be afraid to go back and make changes and make edits. Um, now, hopefully, you've had a bit of a practice with the paths tool, so hopefully you kind of know how this is working. But basically all we're going to do is trace around this image, trying to manipulate the curves wherever possible. You'll notice that I'm kind of dragging these handles a little bit as I go along. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I already have a good idea of where I want the lines to go because I'm using this background um, layer. Um, I should point out that these handles tell us the entry and exit point for the line. So obviously I don't want the line to shoot off this way, I actually want the line to follow this part of my logo. So using that information, it kind of, just by dragging that handle, you can say which way you want the line to go in the future. Just so it saves you that needing to edit it heavily later. So I'm just going to very quickly go around the whole thing. In fact, I think for the sake of making this tutorial a bit quicker, um, I might pause it and you can join me in a second. Okay, so I've gone around the whole thing there. Now if we just quickly have a look at this, um, you'll see that the lines are f not too bad. Um, this one here, that might be a little bit of a problem later, that might be a bit of a bump. But I'm just doing this very quickly. Now, um, again, this one, probably not great. So we, I actually want that quite sharp, so I'm going to... I'll have that there. It doesn't matter that I'm going in there because I'm just using that. Oh no, that would be much better like that. Um, we're gonna, just going to quickly check this to see that it's pretty much the shape we want. Um, I can probably do that a bit better that way. Um, and that probably needs rounding out a little bit. But you'll just see that I'm just going to go around and just quickly clean up some of these lines. And when I'm happy with it, um, what I'm going to do first is create a new layer and press OK and you'll see that now that I've got that white layer um, this is going to be the path that I want to stroke now looking at this I can see that I do just want to make a few other changes um, in fact what do I want to do with that I I'll probably prefer that to be just a little bit rounder and maybe that maybe about here um, I can see this being a problem to be honest, I think I'm getting a bit too fiddly with it. Um, but this is basically the path I want to stroke. So what I'm going to do now is just go over to this area here, the stroke path. Now remember we need to be still on the paths tool and we need to have the tool options selected. So if you haven't got that then you need to go to your tabs and open up your tool options here. But you should have this here. Um, and we're just going to press stroke path 
and I'm going to use a line width of 2 pixels and there it will just draw that in for us so if I now click on paths and for some reason I have to switch that on and off again and then when I change to another tool um, in this case I'm going to go to the magic wand or the fuzzy select tool um, you'll just see that we've drawn that basic first shape now this is a little bit lumpy a little bit ropey but it's okay for our purposes right now so now that I've got my um, fuzzy select tool or the magic wand I'm now going to select inside this and you'll see the marching ants just to show that we've got the inside of our logo selected I'm going to change the foreground and background colour just by clicking on, oh that didn't work go to OK and then the background colour uh, change that to yellow or something like that and then I'm going to pick my gradient fill tool which is here and when I drag a line from here to here it will just fill that in for me nice and easily okay so that's all pretty straightforward as well and then I'm going to press control and shift and A and that will deselect everything so far I now want to um, get rid of this background layer because I'm not going to need that at all I personally want to duplicate this layer and on the layer behind I'm just going to make this one invisible for the moment on the layer behind I'm just going to use my curves tool drag this right down just to change the colour of it so it's a lot darker and just press OK and then I'll make this visible again and the final thing I'm going to do just to add that kind of um, little bubbly effect that I had up here I'm going to use the circle select tool just draw a basic circle here and now the second thing I'm going to do I'm going to hold down control and you'll notice that the icon changes to the circle select tool with a minus and I'm just going to draw another circle here and when I let that go it's actually taken away from the selection oh, I shouldn't have done that um, so it's actually taken away from that selection so what I can then do if I'm working on my top layer and I press control and X to cut that that's cut that out now what I'm going to do is press control V to paste it back into the selection I'm going to turn that floating selection into a new layer press M to get my move tool I'm going to move this back up and I just want to do it a little bit higher I oh, know I'll do this one a little bit lower I'm going to have that a little bit lower than it was originally and I'm just going to turn the transparency down to about there and you'll see that that's kind of blended all of that together and the final thing I'm going to do um, is merge all of the visible layers by pressing control and M and just clicking merge and there we've got a very very quick rendering of a very basic logo um, now as I said there's a lot of um, flaws with this particular one because I haven't taken my time I'm just rushing it for a tutorial sake but I'm hoping that you just get the basic ideas of um, what we've done with the paths tool the, uh, the blend fill tool or the gradient fill tool and using different layers and transparencies and cutting things out and the selection those sorts of tools. We'll go into a little bit more detail with some of those techniques later, but this is one of the practical applications for the Paths tool and some of the other tools. Um, I hope this has been useful, I hope you're beginning to see how some of these techniques can come together, and we'll move on to some more technical stuff a little bit later. Anyway, thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.